Good evening, everybody. You know, you've heard um, acknowledgements of everybody. You've heard them from almost everybody. So the only person I really feel I have to acknowledge is my co-chairperson of the board, because I can see he gets very upset when you don't acknowledge him. So uh, Professor Farid Isaac, <laughs> with the, the order of a what what, you know, in silver or platinum, I can't remember. Great man, great man. I remember him as a fiery activist in the UDF days, in the struggle against apartheid. You know, I, you could never have come across, across a more moving, rousing orator than this um, winner of the order of what what. He was amazing. <laughs> he was truly amazing. So um, ambassadors who are here, I think you've all been listed. If I start listing and I miss somebody, I'm in trouble. That's what happens when you're in government. You know, you can get away with it, I can't. But I've met a lot of the ambassadors who are here. Wonderful to have you here, because it's all about solidarity. And these are the ambassadors that care, that care about justice, that care about truth, that care about people. So we, we are so delighted to have you here. My own colleagues, Deputy Minister Pinky Kikane, John Jeffries, um, Enver Surti, uh, there are at least three dangos here, by the way. At, uh, I counted three, there might be more. You know, there's um, a writer, Dango, over here who writes books. There's um, a former ambassador, Dango, somewhere over here. And then there's Zain Dango, he's my favorite Dango, actually. <laughs> so to all of you, many, many um, very important uh, people who are here, I think in the spirit, I think you would agree with me, Farid, in the spirit of what this is all about, there's no one here who is any more important than anyone else who is here. Do we agree on that? So to all of you, halala. <laughs> Amand la. Yeah, good. Thank you. And my dear, my dear, and the members of the media who are here, you know the media are under attack as we speak. We value your presence here. We're with you. We'll defend you. Make no mistake. We will defend people who stand up for the truth. We will offend people like yourself who speak the truth, who discover the truth and then speak it. That, for me, is an inspiring story. So, um, comrades and friends, I must say it, is, it really is a huge honor for me to be here today with you, supporting the Palestinian struggle by observing the United Nations International Day of Solidarity with the people of Palestine. Of course, this year, this important day of solidarity coincides with the 100-year centenary of our own struggle icons, former President Tata Nelson Mandela and uh, Mama Albertina Sisulu. It is therefore apt that I start by recalling the words of Tata Madiba, probably oft-quoted words, who famously said in 1997, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. And we need to remind ourselves of that. It came from our icon, Tata Madiba. And so that's what he said. We know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. We have a saying in South Africa that freedom was not free. The brutality of apartheid was severe, and its scars today, 25 years later, are still painfully with us. And they are manifested in many ways, but most painfully in the persistent poverty, the unacceptably high levels of inequality, and massive unemployment in our country. For South Africans, collectively and individually, the injustices of land dis dispossession through forced removals, the inhumane working conditions for black people in mines and factories, the enforcement of apartheid legislation depriving black people of rights to equal education and quality health care, freedom of movement and association, all of that still looms large. Lives were lost, families destroyed, and our country was left with scars that are not yet healed. However, we prevailed we prevailed, and our first democratic elections in 1994 ushered in a new era. The struggle for the organization, the struggle of the organization that many of us here, of us here, are members of, the African National Congress, 
succeeded through the combination of arms struggle, underground ANC work inside the country, the mobilization of the masses of South Africans in organizations of the mass democratic movement, and importantly, international solidarity action to isolate the apartheid regime. No South African, irrespective of color or creed, can argue that South Africa today has not progressed to a much, much better place than it was in the dark days of apartheid. A fact we were reminded of yesterday, for those of you who are watching the Zondo Commission unfold, we were reminded by Cheryl Carolus, the former Deputy Secretary General of the African National Congress, when she gave evidence at the Zondo Commission of Inquiry into state capture. She reminded us of the routine killings, the assassination of Krasani, the Boipatong massacre, and that this was the high cost of gaining the right to vote, a new and progressive constitution and a constitutional court. The stuff that we have today, the stuff that we cherish, came at a high cost. Our freedom was not handed to us on a platter. It did not come free. So, as the beneficiaries of the international support that helped usher in our democracy, as was argued by former President Mandela, and I quote him again, it behoves all South Africans to stand and be counted among those contributing actively to the cause of freedom and justice in Palestine. I'm going to repeat that. It behoves all South Africans to stand and be counted among those contributing actively to the cause of freedom and justice in Palestine. <laughs> we know from his examples, from the example of his life and in his words, that peace and prosperity, tranquility and security are only possible if these are enjoyed by all without discrimination. South Africa and the overwhelming majority of South Africans are proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Palestinian people in their struggle against Israeli occupation and for the right to self-determination and statehood. The United Nations International Day of Solidarity with the people of Palestine was inaugurated, as you probably know, 41 years ago, 30 years after the Nakba Day, which destroyed 400 Palestinian villages and towns and 10 years after the Israeli military occupation of East Jer Jerusalem. At the time, the beloved and much-loved president of the ANC, Oliver Tambo, was a powerful voice in support of the Palestinian struggle, and he pledged the solidarity of the ANC with the people of Palestine. Next year, we'll be celebrating 25 years of democracy in South Africa, but the blockade on Gaza has not been lifted. And arrests and detentions, violence and gross human rights violations, gross human rights violations continue in Palestine. The statistics of the Prisoner Support and Human Rights Association, Adamir, show that there are no less than 5,554 political prisoners, 540 with life sentences, and 489 with sentences of over 20 years. There are over 600,000 settlers living in settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, despite the United Nations Security Council resolution in 2016 declaring that these settlements have no legal validity and constitute a flagrant violation under international law. The continued violations constitute nothing less than a humanitarian crisis. It is thus with intent that at the 54th, I know you speak about it jokingly, but some of the people who were there, notwithstanding the shenanigans, there are people there that wanted to take advantage and wanted to fulfill the mission of the ANC, as has been expressed over many, many years, so that the resolution that was taken in December last year for us is very important, and we resolved that government should be directed to downgrade the South African Embassy in Israel to a liaison office. We also condemned the provocative decision of the US administration to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Earlier this year, our ambassador was withdrawn from Tel Aviv, and we will be unwavering in our mobilization of the international community to support the establishment of an independent state of Palestine 
with East Jerusalem as its capital and an end to the Israeli occupation. So South Africa has done one thing over the years, uh, but we must always, it's a game that one always should play very carefully. We, we try to win people over. We try to find peaceful settlements. We try to persuade. Nelson Mandela was all about that. So don't get too impatient as attempts are made to persuade, because we do want peaceful resolutions of conflict. However, principle must prevail. Peaceful uh, resolutions of conflict are not in contradiction to standing up for what is right and standing up for principle. The Palestine Solidarity Movement in South Africa is strong. BDS has become the, back, the backbone of that solidarity. And I urge them, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me, to continue to mobilize all South Africans to support the struggle for freedom in Palestine. BDS in South Africa is led, well, you see them, led by young, energetic South Africans who are not old enough to have experienced themselves the brutality of apartheid, but who recognize that their own freedom did not come free. They are genuine, dedicated human rights activists, generously supporting the Palestinian cause in the true spirit of internationalism. So to all of the Palestinians who are here with us tonight, we've got to say, we've got to give real credit, real acknowledgement to these young activists who are doing an excellent job in swelling the ranks of support for the Palestinian cause in every sector of society in South Africa. Government, business, labor, faith-based organizations, academia, the entertainment industry, and the media. They can, they, they are, they are doing amazing work. They're doing truly amazing work. They can rightfully also feel proud of the involvement of their program director this evening, Kach, uh, Kach. Yeah, you know what, I, you know, that, that guy, that guy as well as all of the other people who are here with us tonight. Um, they have large followings from the people who are here tonight, have large followings. And what is good is they don't take that, is, is, insofar as they tell jokes, they don't take their large followings for granted. They don't abdicate their social responsibilities. They are here to entertain. Music does bring people together. You were right, music does bring people together. But it can bring people together for the wrong things. So what they are doing, these entertainers, these artists, are bringing people together for the right things. Are through their art, including uh, Chester Missing over here, through their art, raising people's consciousness. So likewise, Sashi, your voice is a very important voice. Because you influence ordinary South Africans who are not necessarily politically active. You weren't particularly politically active. You said what you thought was okay, was innocent. But in you standing up now, having discovered the truth, discovering things that many South Africans don't know about, your voice is very important to, to help mobilize, as I said, those South Africans who are not necessarily conscious of these things, um, and for them to better understand and actively support the struggle for freedom in Palestine. The work of BDS is informed, of course, by the gravitas and wisdom of older people, not young people like me, older people I mean. Amongst them, South African struggle heroes from the Jewish community. People such as Dennis Goldberg, Ronnie Casrals, Ben Turok, and Sheila Basel, who I believe is also a board member of BDS. They've all been prominent voices in condemning Israeli atrocities. Their work and the work of South African Jews for a free Palestine gives inspiration to the voices of young Jewish people who are speaking out in South Africa today, articulating the difference between their Jewish religious beliefs and their refusal to identify with the atrocities against the Palestinian people. I think it's very, very important. Dear friends, many, many Jewish, Jewish South Africans took a strong stand against apartheid, as did many, many Muslim South Africans. I believe that when atrocities are committed today in the name of Islam, the first to raise their voices should be the Muslim community. Similarly, I believe the Jewish community should be shouting out loudly, not in my name, when the state of Israel violates the rights of the people of Palestine. 
No doubt everyone in this audience followed the media coverage of the two high school students who earlier this month took the knee at a school assembly in Cape Town during the singing of the Hatikva. And I agree with Ronnie Casarals. I saw what he said. He said it's highly unlikely that Muslims or Muslim-inclined schools would be singing the Saudi or Egyptian anthems or any anthem other than our own South African anthem. These young people who have explained that for them the Hatikva is a beautiful song, they should be applauded for resisting being forced to stand up and sing the Israeli anthem when they do not support what Israel is doing and for arguing against being taught only one side of the story at school. Sashi, they tried to bribe you into silence. You stood up against it. You're not alone. There's been a disturbing development in our country, in our country recently, um, of vicious attacks, vicious attacks, racial slanders against people who are telling us the truth, who are standing up for the truth and justice, trying to intimidate them into silence. We must not allow people to intimidate any of us into silence. That will be the beginning of the end. Let us just. I think it's very important that we should speak the truth, be bold enough to speak to the truth, but equally important, support those that are being intimidated. Often they feel alone. I'm sure you felt very alone at times. It's very important that we should stand up and support those people who are being victimized today because the purpose of the, the, the victimizers, the purpose of, those, of the intimidators is to intimidate them into silence to intimidate them out of existence. We must not allow that to happen. So our answer to them is no, we won't allow it to happen. Allow me to just share one more quote with you. It's from another great South African freedom fighter and internationalist, internationalist the late comrade Ahmad Kathrada. It's a great honor for me, by the way, a huge honor for me to be part of the, of the Ahmad Kathrada Foundation. The, um, and this is what he said in his address to a conference in Palestine on the 27th of April in 2013. 27th of April, our Freedom Day. This is what he said. Even during the worst days of apartheid, we did not have walls to divide and control people. We also did not have separate roads for separate races, and we did not have the system of checkpoints that exist here. What he was highlighting is that all of the difficulties that we went through in different ways, they are there in Palestine in some ways even worse. So I must say, uh, you know, when I was once upon a time the Minister of Land Affairs and we were dealing with the, for the legacy of forced removals, the pain of forced removals, the work with, um, with District 6 and other urban cases of removals, the parallels between what happened in South Africa and what is happening in Palestine today are just incredible. And so we, above all, above more than any other country in the world, should be standing up for, the, uh, up for the rights of the Palestinian people. So let me conclude by saying unequivocally, sorry for being very serious, but you know, I, I've got to give you some light relief from all of the jokers, all of the comedians. So a serious moment is not too bad. But let me conclude by saying unequivocally that South Africa supports the people of Palestine in the same spirit of internationalism and international solidarity which we ourselves benefited from and know the potency of that solidarity. We knew that through our popular struggles supported by progressive forces from all around the world that we would overcome apartheid. And we did. There's a story that Comrade Joe Slovo Another person, another Jewish person, by the way, Jewish people in the struggle in South Africa, in the white community that were taking a stand, the white Democrats, the Jewish people were disproportionately represented in far greater numbers than any other community. And that is the truth. Joe Slover, this is what he said um, in the 1960s. He was asked, how long did he think it would take us to liberate our country? How long would it take to get our freedom? And he said confidently, five years. Then he was challenged. He was challenged when he repeated this in the early 1980s. And his retort was completely consistent. He said, yes, I said five years then, and I'm still saying five years now. That's what Joe Slovo said. 
But the story ends well, of course, just a few years later, we got it. We got our freedom. And we're told that when Joe Slovo, man of great humor that he was, very human person that he was, when he arrived in South Africa, the first thing that he said was now, he said, now, as I was saying when I was so rudely interrupted, and he continued. So, to all our Palestinian friends who are here tonight, we stand side by side with you, and we know that your freedom will come. We call on all South Africans to support the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and statehood, and we pray in our different credos for peace, security, and friendship in the Middle East. Thank you very much.